of Israel, and so on and so forth. And then, in this presidential race, we were all, I guess, uh, amused, I would say, amused by the question or by the response uh, of a presidential candidate when he was asked about Aleppo, when he said, what is Aleppo? <laughs> Is it a dish? Uh, is it a uh, uh, menu? Is it something to eat, something to uh, drive, something to fly? And what is Aleppo? And so you see the ignorance that overall our knowledge of Aleppo and Syria. The true question, of course, that should be asked today about Aleppo is how is Aleppo? How is Aleppo coping with what is happening? Now, we all know that there is a focus, there is an immense attention and focus on Aleppo lately. After five years of the war in Aleppo, and after its division and breakup and destruction, suddenly everybody's attention is on Aleppo. Why? Because Aleppo is very close to being liberated. And all those extremist groups who unfortunately are allies of ours are on the east side of Aleppo, which is, is, is very close to being liberated. And so there is a hysteric uh, atmosphere in the West, all the West and the mainstream media of the West, as to the population of Aleppo, citizens of Aleppo, Aleppo uh, is being uh, bombarded, Aleppo is being raided, Aleppo is, is under siege. Aleppo has been under siege for five years. And our communities, we, our communities, the Christian and the Armenian communities, who mainly are on the west side of Aleppo, have been suffering for the past five years. But now we started hearing about Aleppo. Others started hearing about Aleppo. So today, it, this is a wonderful, wonderful opportunity for us again to have someone who lives in Aleppo. And we know that, I don't want to talk about all Syria that's concentrated on Aleppo today. <laughs> the population of Aleppo before the war was almost 5 million people, close to 4 to 5 million people. When I left Aleppo, I think, population of Aleppo was around 750,000. And at the time, of course, the Armenian population in Syria was around 300, 350,000. We were a very, very large, big component of the overall population. Things changed, evolved, uh, the population grew. Uh, but today, uh, I think the population has been diminished or reduced to around all, and I'm talking about all Aleppo, to around a million and a half, maybe. Now, a quarter of a million of those live on the east side. A million and a quarter live on the west side. And that's where we are. That's where our kin are, that's where our community lives, and that's where the Christians live, uh, and, and that's where the rest of the Aleppo population lives. But we never hear anything about that million and a quarter million and a quarter people who, as I said, were many millions, do not have water for years now, do not have running water, for years now do not have power and electricity. Nobody cares about it the way we hear it today. So today we will hear more and uh, from someone who has an address that is in Aleppo, Syria. Now, what is, you would say, of course, uh, AMA's involvement in this? AMA has and does have a, a full commitment of supporting, sustaining, and saving our kin and our community in Aleppo. And this is something that's going on for the past five years. It started as soon as the war reached Aleppo, and then it grew, of course, over time. 
not only we care about the population of uh, our community in Aleppo, uh, which certainly has diminished to a, uh, I don't know, I will not talk about numbers, but probably uh, Harvard Sergeant can probably address that as well. But we have a small core community who has not left Aleppo. But uh, our community certainly has been dispersed. So we have a lot of refugees. Uh, our population is not called refugees because they don't live in tents or under tents that has been uh, deployed and directed by the United Nations. Our refugees live with families or on their own. 20,000 of them are in Armenia. Maybe uh, close to that number, a little other that number is in Lebanon. Uh, the total uh, immigrant population uh, Syrian Armenians who have or will reach Canada when, uh, when it reaches its climax, its plateau, will be 10,000. Uh, and then there are those who are still in Aleppo. <laughs> Living in Aleppo is Russian roulette. Anyone, whether they leave their home in, in Aleppo in the morning or whether they are in their house, they do not know whether they will survive until the evening or not. Because Aleppo has been and is being bombarded indiscriminately for so many years. Our victims are in the hundreds, the Armenian victims I'm talking about, and there are thousands and thousands of, of non-Armenian victims in Aleppo, of course, including Christians and Muslims. One more thing, and, and I will stop. One of the programs that AMA started over a year ago is called Armenian Lifeline. For the four, first several years, our program was Armenian Syria Relief. And what we're trying to do is, is try to support and sustain the community to survive and, and live in Aleppo, get all the necessary and, and essential essentials for life uh, that, that we could uh, furnish them or assist them to get. But things changed. There came a time where I would admit I have started doubting myself, I've started doubting about the future of the Armenians in Syria or Aleppo as the vibrant community that was before the war. Definitely, Armenians will stay in Aleppo and Armenians will live in Aleppo. But what happened, all those who were able left Syria and Aleppo and got out of, of there, uh, and at least the least that I can say about them was they were safe. They were safe in Lebanon, they were safe in Armenia. But what happened is there is a core of, of population there in the hundreds, if not more, who did not have the means of living. What they had from their ancestry and as survivors, as the children, as the descendants of the survivors of genocide, they had only what they had in Aleppo. They had a home, they had a business, and so they could not move anywhere. So we decided to move them. Where? One single address, the homeland. <coughs> Everyone who is willing but unable to fund or finance their transportation to Armenia, we finance it. We have been financing it. We have been funding it. And this courageous, this amazing man who every single day risks his life and risks his life in a in multitude of, of times because not only he is on the safer side in a sense, uh, at least uh, uh, of, of, of Aleppo, but he is on the road most of the time. And it's very, very dangerous being on the road. But he is devoted to his people. He adheres to the commission of God. He is a man of God. And he is there with his flock every day, overseeing their safety, overseeing their well-being, and risking his life. 
I am not going to go through the formalities and introduce Reverend Harold Jules Selimian in his professional life. We are beyond that today. Reverend Selimian is the president of the Armenian evangelical community in Syria, and at least he's been living there for the past.
you're going to have the second set of slides where it will show you 